2 Kings chapter 18, verse 22. And the Bible reads, But if ye say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away, and hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? The title of my sermon is uh, Ignorant Accusers. And uh, we see this very often uh, in our lives. And uh, we're going we're gonna to read and get some backstory, make some comparison between uh, what I'm sure most of us have gone through. Um, we're going to relook at this accusation and then just see the proper response to those ignorant accusers. Um, backstory uh, Hezekiah is the guy in this story, and he had a father, King Ahaz. King Ahaz did not serve the Lord. King Ahaz um, made idols. He, uh, you know, he, <clears throat> he trusted on Assyria to protect him from the Syrians, I believe it was, instead of trusting on the Lord. And he even went as far to literally remodel the temple to give the king of Assyria a, like a summer home in Jerusalem. It's pretty wicked stuff, all right? King Ahaz, or I'm sorry, King Hezekiah comes on the scene, and now he's got to clean this up, right? Yep. We're, we're all from, probably, we're all from families that are less Christian than we would like. And we're trying to either recover from that or improve our own families. You know, we're trying to be Christ-like. And there's some things that we do have to overcome. And King Hezekiah had to overcome a lot. Verse 1, we're going to read a little bit. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, did. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and rent, I'm sorry, and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. So we see that Hezekiah does a great job. He comes in, you know, gangbusters. He hits the ground running. He says, all right, no more high places, no more idols. We're going to even break up Moses' brazen serpent because the children of Israel are serving it. And, uh, yeah, Assyrians, we're kicking you out. No more summer home for the king, right? And not only is he fighting the uh, enemies that are, you know, in town, the domestic enemies, but he's fighting the foreign enemies. He's fighting the Philistines too. He's doing a great job, right? And if any of us has ever done this where, hey, we've chosen to serve God and we're going to put away the old friends, we're going to... We're going to separate ourselves from uh, the worldly co-workers or whatever. We always, right? It's just smooth sailing from there, right? No. Right. No, absolutely not. Right? We get some resistance. All right? And same with King Hezekiah. He gets some resistance. Verse 13. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended, return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Now Hezekiah kind of falters here for a second. He says, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I, I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. You know what? Hey, let's, let's make, make good with this. All right, what do you want? He wants some money. Okay, so Hezekiah does that. He gives him some money. He makes a bad choice here, right? And what's the saying? You give the devil an inch, what's he going to take? He's going to take a mile, right? Okay? So, 
Verse 17, we see this. Verse 17, And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lachis to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is by the highway of the fuller's field. So he sends, he's not there for just the gold. He could have sent, a, you know, a small group of people with a cart to pick up the gold. No, he's coming for the entire thing. He's coming for all the cities, all in Jerusalem too. He's coming for everything, right? <clears throat> now we get back to what started us off, the ignorant accusation here, the ignorant accuser. Verse 19, And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah, thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words, I have counsel and strength for the war. Now in whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Here's his first ignorant statement. Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, unto all that trust in him. Has there been any mention here where Hezekiah said, you know, I'm going to make a league with Egypt and they're going to... No, right? He's not trusting on the world, right? He's trusting on the Lord. We can see that from the beginning that he was trusting on the Lord. He cleaned up the kingdom to do that. Yeah. Verse 22, his ignorance gets even worse. But if ye say unto me, we trust in the Lord our God, is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away? Whose high places and altars did he take away? Did he take away God's high places and altars? No. He took away all the false gods, all the high places, all the wickedness that was going on in Israel. He took those out of the way, right? This guy doesn't know what he's talking about, right? Let's see. And hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. So this guy's saying, hey, look, you guys aren't real Christians. You know, you guys are hateful. You've literally, like, destroyed everything else, right? You, you say there's only one way to God. There's only one way to serve him. There's only one place to serve him at, right? He's saying, you guys are hateful. You're not Christians. You're no real Christians, right? And we get this, whether it be on Facebook yeah. or from Facebook. Family, friends, co-workers. Oh, you guys are hateful. You guys don't like the homos? Oh, they'll say gays, you know. But you don't like them, you know. And it, you can't do that. You can't say that. You're not like Christ. You carry a gun. Jesus would never carry a gun, you know. Even though he told them to take swords, you know. But whatever, you know. It's ignorance. They're ignorant accusers, right? And there are ways to deal with these people. Now, Turn over to Nehemiah chapter 4. I'm going to read from Nehemiah chapter 4 because Nehemiah dealt with a very similar situation. Um, and he has a little bit more variety in how he responded. So we're going to see what his responses were. But uh, King Hezekiah did use the same, the same pattern, just not, not as uh, varied. So I'm going to read from Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 19. It says... <clears throat> But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, uh, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, What is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? You know, they're there to build the wall of Jerusalem, and they're making a false accusation because the king told them, Hey, you can go back to Jerusalem and build this wall. Right? He's not there to rebel against the king. He's doing what the king told him he could do. Yeah. And so they're like, Hey, are you going to rebel against the king? So... Here's what uh, Nehemiah says. Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. So he tells, he just gives them a small rebuke, right? And then he goes off and in the very next chapter, he's setting things up, figuring out where they need to build next. And, do, you know, he ignores them. You know, and that's normally the best response we can have is just ignore the mockers. If they're mocking, you know what? Give them one little rebuke, one little reproof, and ignore it. Because, I mean, you can spend an hour on Facebook yeah. arguing with people, and guess what you did? You lost an hour of your life. And that's about it. That's all you accomplished. All right? Ignore them. Rebuke them once if you want, but then ignore them. <clears throat> Number two, if it gets worse, Nehemiah chapter 4. 
verse 4. If it gets worse, you know, if they're coming and they're, you know, they're persistent, they're not leaving you alone, right? They're no longer just mocking, they're, they're being aggressive. Pray an imprecatory prayer. Pray against them. Hezekiah did that, right? And, and God answered his prayer. Nehemiah does that. Verse 4. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity. And cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. You know, he's saying, hey, look, they might ask for forgiveness for this when they start getting judged, but don't let them get away with it, right? Yeah. Give them the judgment that they deserve. Pray an imprecatory prayer. All right, number three, that might not be, God might not just take care of it for you, right? He might not just do what he did for Hezekiah and totally wipe the Assyrians out for him or just send them away, right? You might have to be ready to fight. Nehemiah 4.14 verse 15 says, And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass when your enemies heard that it was known unto us and God had brought their counsel to naught that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. You know what? Be ready to fight. Be ready to put a stop to what's there. And most of the time, guess what? Those ignorant accusers are just going to chicken out, right? So just be ready. Be ready to fight. Ignore them if you can. Pray against them. Be ready to fight. And that's it. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity to preach. I ask you to please just uh, bless the next guy that uh, comes up. In Jesus' name, amen.